Hi everybody, this is the Math 30-1 Functions Review. This is question 12. It says graph the function. Let me give you the function right there. State the x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and the zeros of the function. Uh, determine the intervals where the function is positive and the intervals where the function is negative. Okay. It was asking us to do a lot here. Um, now, we, we know that this is a cubic. And we, you should, at this point, already have kind of a basic idea of what a cubic function should look like. So it's a, a cubic, it's going to have that stereotypical little S shape to it, okay? Uh, but more than that, it's a positive cubic. The leading coefficient here is positive one, okay, in front of the X cubed term, which means that because it's an odd function, it's moving up, okay? As you go left to right, the function is increasing. So state the X intercepts. Well, that's just a matter of, of setting the function equal to zero, okay, and solving this. Now, by the way, as soon as the function goes to zero, we're looking for the zeros of the function. So when it asks for x-intercepts, like don't get thrown off by that, x-intercepts and the zeros of the function, those are the same thing. It's just, it's doing it twice here, uh, being a little redundant. Anyway, take a quick look at this here. We're going to, to want to solve this. Now, in the previous question, I did grouping. If I group these two terms together, I'll take out an x squared. I'll just be left with x plus one, but that ain't going to happen with these last two terms here. So I'm probably going to have to use my, um, my factor theorem. So I'm looking at 8 here. My possible factors are x plus or minus 1, x plus or minus 2, x plus or minus 4, and x plus or minus 8. Okay, well, I don't have a ton, uh, but I still got a few to kind of plod through here. Let's try x plus 1 first as a factor. So if we try x plus 1, means we're going to substitute and we're going to let x equal negative 1. And so that, well, that'll get me. That'll get me negative 1 here, plus 1. Those will cancel. Uh, so the function here, the polynomial, if I evaluate that at negative 1, I'm going to get, what was that, 28? Well, that ain't what I'm looking for. So let's try x minus 1, which means I'd be plugging in positive 1. So what am I going to get here? I'm going to get 1 plus 1. Okay, well, here we go. 1 plus 1 is, is 2, plus 8 is 10. But then minus that 10... Okay, it's going to get me 0. So p at 1 is going to be equal to 0. So I know that that x minus 1 is a possible factor. So let's do some synthetic division. I'll put a 1 outside here. Okay, so I've got 1, 1, negative 10, 8. Okay, as my coefficients here. So bring down the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And I'm getting a 0 as a remainder, which is exactly what I was expecting because I knew that x minus 1 was a factor. So this gets me, at this point here, I can write this out as 0. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this equation, but I'm going to put this in a more factored form. x minus 1 times x squared plus 2x minus 8. Okay, now I've got that quadratic there, and I should be able to factor that <coughs> relatively easily. Okay, uh, factors of negative 8 that add to 2, well, it'll be positive 4 minus 2. And so the x-intercepts of the function or the zeros, if you will, will be 1, negative 4, positive 2. Okay, good. So there's, there's part of the answer already here. Now, the y-intercept is just going to occur okay, when, when x is equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, this term disappears, this term disappears. Basically, any term that has an x and it disappears, we're just left with 8. And that is the significance of the constant term. That is going to be the, the y-intercept. So the y-intercept here is positive 8. Now, this is enough right now to give us a, a sense of what this graph looks like. So let's just sketch this out here. I know that at negative 4, at 1, and at 2, I've got x-intercepts. I know that this is a positive cubic, okay? And uh, the multiplicities of all my roots here are 1 meaning that the graph is going to cut right through it at the x-axis here. So it's going to go through, through, through. And this up here, this would have to be 8. So that's what my function is kind of looking like. Now, once I've got that, the, the question was asking me to identify the intervals where the graph is positive and where the graph is negative, where the function is positive or the function is negative. So the function is positive, okay, now I know, I know not everybody is, is really comfortable with this symbol right here. I, I know that from experience here. 
This is our greater than symbol, right? The, it points to the lower, the smaller amount here. So the function is greater than zero, meaning it's positive where? Well, take a look. Okay, remember that when we do this, this represents the y coordinate, okay? So I'm essentially asking you where, okay, is the y coordinate positive? Now, I've done this enough to know that a lot of people mistake what I'm saying here and you, you're thinking x-coordinate here. Now, we are going to answer this question in terms of the x-coordinate, but the question is asking where the y-coordinate is positive. Think of this as like a highway. So we're driving along this highway. Let's say that this is the border between, between Canada and the U.S., okay? So when we're, when we're below the border, we're in the U.S., when we're above the border, we're in Canada, and, and being in Canada, that's a positive thing. <laughs> okay, I think that's kind of a cute little joke. I, it, it's just, so I hope it helps out here. It's not, it's, I'm not intending to, to badmouth the states at all here, but it, it just works out that way. Um, when I am along, going along this road here, when am I positive in Canada? Okay, well, I'm in Canada when I pass negative four and until I hit one. So that is going to be when x is between negative four and one. But then I also jump back up into Canada once I get past two. And now from this point on, there's, there's no other x-intercepts here. I have to assume that I'm always, always there. So comma, where x is greater than two. For all values of x greater than two. Now, I answer this question in terms of x, but again, the question is asking where the y-coordinate is positive. Okay, along this road, all of these y-coordinates here are negative until I hit negative four. Then the y-coordinates are positive. Okay, they're above the x-axis. Remember, this is the line here. I'm asking vertically. Where is this thing? Think of it like this. I'm just cutting off the bottom here. Where does this graph exist above the x-axis? Now, the next part of this is asking where does the graph exist below the x-axis? So we're cutting off the top here. And along the road here, well, uh, if I'm driving along the highway from left to right here, uh, for all of those values of x before negative 4, I'm below. So the y coordinates here are, are, are negative. So this is going to occur where x is less than negative 4. And then for this little blip in between 1 and 2, all of the x coordinates here between 1 and 2 have y coordinates that are negative. And so, oops, sorry, I was going to write negative 1 there. That's not what I meant. Ah. Okay, so between 1 and 2 is also where the function goes negative for just a little bit. I know that's, uh, sometimes these are hard concepts to get your head around here, uh, these, especially with these intervals and whatnot. Uh, don't give up on that. Keep, keep working at it if you're having troubles with it.